Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Pradeep and today I'm going to talk about uh, how we can leverage Terraform modules to build uh, cloud infrastructure in particularly GCP, but these uh, same concepts can be applied to other cloud providers as well. Uh, so quick intro about me. Uh, so I'm an IT consultant with over eight years of experience and my expertise is in big data cloud, particularly in GCP and AWS. And I've been doing DevOps uh, stuff from a long time as well and started writing my uh, some of the GCP related stuff on my blog. Uh, and recently done uh, GCP and AWS certifications as well uh, as I'm working on these technologies quite frequently. So the agenda of the talk uh, today is we'll just have an introduction of a Terraform, a quick introduction as you all, everyone most uh, knows uh, what Terraform is by now. Uh, then uh, how Terraform modules can help us and then uh, the testing, uh, how we can do Terraform module testing. So Terraform is an open source tool, uh, came from the HashiCorp, I really like it. And it makes a life a lot easy when you de develop things on the cloud. So it allows us to build, change, and version our infrastructure as a code. As we do any uh, code like a Java or Python, it's in the similar way we can version our code, uh, version our infrastructure as well, and build it very quickly. And the life cycle is pretty simple. It's like four stage life cycle. When we have a Terraform code, we do Terraform in it, which initializes the repo Terraform code. And when uh, I mean initialization, it it's going to download all the dependencies like dependent modules, plugin, provider, et cetera for you and make the code ready to be <clears throat> executed. Then we can run Terraform plan. Terraform plan gives us a nice execution plan uh, based on the code we have written for the infrastructure. It, it tells us what it is going to build, what it is going to change or what it is going to destroy on the cloud. Once we are happy with the plan, then we can run Terraform apply to create that infrastructure or make changes to the infrastructure. And once we are done with the project or we don't no longer require that infrastructure, we can run Terraform destroy to destroy the infrastructure. This way we can quickly build and destroy the infrastructure and save the cost and utilize the cloud in a way it meant to be. Not like leaving the infrastructure like running long if you don't need it. For example, if I just need a compute instance VM for two hours, I don't have to just create by some shell script or something and leave it running for maybe six hours or a day or something like that. I can quickly automate that in a Terraform, run Terraform plan and apply. Uh, and whenever I need it, I just create it and then it's good to go. Let's take a sim, uh, sample architecture. Uh, for example, we have a simple architecture like this. We have one web server. There is a service account attached to it. Uh, it can interact with some storage, maybe a GCS or a data store or something like that. And then uh, users can connect to it via internet. So there are a lot of uh, components from uh, Google infrastructure here. And if we do this in a shell script or some other automation, it's a little bit difficult uh, to manage the dependencies and other bits. But we can implement this architecture in a Terraform in a very nice and easy way. So how does the code looks like if I want to do this in a Terraform way? So for a service account, it's a simple, uh, like a snippet like this. We just call like a resource Google service account. We provide the account ID we need, uh, the, the display name and provide uh, the bindings as well, like what role I need for that service account. Then. To create a bucket, I just call Google storage bucket, pass the name which I want, the location, and I can upload an object as well uh, with a bucket creation. If I see here, uh, there's a bucket uh, in the uh, object, bucket is named as a Google storage bucket dot config name. Basically I'm referencing from here. So Terraform is intelligent enough to uh, infer this dependency. So it is going to uh, execute this block once the bucket is ready. And for the VM, again, I have some Terraform code where I define the properties of what type of VM I want, what is the metadata script, and what service account I want to attach, and are there any dependencies I want to be. So it looks like really simple. So as a developer, if I want that kind of uh, infrastructure, I can just quickly get this kind of a code and run Terraform plan, apply, and I get the 
I get the infrastructure on a GCP. But there is some problem with this. This works well when I'm working alone or uh, in a like a one team person, that's fine. But for example, in a real world, we have multiple environments. Like we need the same infrastructure in a dev environment, then the same in the test to do some testing. And then finally, prod or some organization have more than three environments as well. So we need to create the similar environment. We need a similar infrastructure in different environment, which means like probably we are going to copy the code for a different environment or find some way to do that. Also, if we have one single environment, but let's say we have a multiple developers and we want to give like a, a separate isolated environment to the each of them, then again, it's kind of, we need the same infrastructure again and again. And to do that with the Terraform, we probably, one first thing is, okay, let's copy the code and give the same code to everyone and they can run the, the code. The problem is once you have a multiple copies of a same code, which is like a duplication, then the code can diverge. Like one person can change something, the change might not reflect in another person's code because if he hasn't pulled like those kind of things. So Terraform module is a really great way to solve these kind of problem. When you have a, when you need a, a repeatable infrastructure in a different environment or maybe in a same environment for different people, you can package the Terraform code as a module and the developers or consumer can consume this module, pass some properties to get their infrastructure. In that way, Terraform is going to create the infrastructure in the same way as it's defined in a module and people can just change some property, for example, VM instance name or the instance type and all those stuff. So these are the some uh, core features of Terraform uh, module. So it's a collection of different Terraform resource. So the code which we saw previously, if we just package them in a folder directory, that's a Terraform module and we can reference that module in a root Terraform, co a mod, uh, to root Terraform project and we can import this module and create the infrastructure. As we are packaging a diff, like complete architecture, so it allows us to describe the infrastructure as a blueprint. So you can easily visualize this, what module is going to do for you. So it's easy to understand for architectures, developers, project managers, etc. Obviously we are doing this for a reusable because we don't want the code duplication. So it's kind of pretty reusable. It also gives a collaborative development. So when I'm developing a Terraform module, it's not necessary that I have to write the whole code and everything. I can basically, my team or different teams can write it and contribute to that. <clears throat> Sorry. And also if there are uh, many Terraform modules in the open source community. So if I want uh, to add some features or do some things, I can also raise PR. So it's a great way to collaboratively develop the Terraform modules. Once you have the Terraform modules, maybe from the open source community or within an organization developed by some team. So it helps to easily start uh, on any cloud. So for example, if I want to create a GCP network or a VM instance or a GK cluster, I don't have a time to develop the modules. There are some modules already up available on the open source to do the POCs or those kind of thing. I can quickly get those modules and build the infrastructure. I don't have to uh, deal with writing that uh, the code from the scratch. So it's really helpful there. And also as it's on the, as infrastructure as a code, it lives on the GitHub or any version control. You can version the modules and build feature by feature. So this is a sample Terraform modules uh, lives in uh, one of the repo Terraform module GCS. Uh, this is a sample structure uh, which I generally uh, go for. So if you see, it's a there is a change log just to capture the changes of what happens on the over the uh, time in the modules. So people can use the, the version they want. A license of uh, if you're open sourcing, and a nice readme. Uh, then some TF file, which is going to actually, actually create your uh, infrastructure. In this example, this module is for creating a GCS bucket. So I have a bucket.tf and I like to keep some example folders uh, with some different examples uh, where people can refer and uh, quickly start with this module as well and required outputs and then the variables. Uh, later, I'll just quickly uh, navigate to the GitHub and show some code. Now to call the uh, module, it's pretty straightforward now for any consumer. This is calling some other module called app, which is going to create the infrastructure diagram, which we saw earlier. So I can just say uh, module my app 
and the source is equal to the source path where my module lives, my module code lives, and all the properties that module is expecting. So like project ID, which, which GCP project, I want to create this infrastructure, the region, the service account ID, what's the machine type, if I want to put some labels uh, and so, so on. Now, the good thing with the module is I can use the, the local path. I can use the GitHub, like if the module lives on the Git, so I can just use the Git path. Even I can uh, refer to a particular version if I just want to get a particular version of the module. And if I want the same infrastructure for multiple people or some different for different ones, so uh, as we saw earlier, I want infrastructure for dev one and dev two. It's really easy. I just copy the module, the whole block, and just copy paste, and then just change the variables which I need. For example, in the my app one, the environment way, uh, tag is dev one, and it create it's is in the GCP project one, and in the my app two, it's in the GCP project two, and the tag is dev two. So it's really easy. It becomes really easy to create that infrastructure again and again with uh, very less code. The module cells can be on local as we saw or on the GitHub, but there are other uh, uh, parts as well where we can have our modules like Bitbucket, Terraform registry and HTTP URL, S3 bucket, GCS bucket and so on. Uh, for the latest list, I would suggest to uh, refer the link uh, modules or sources, which has the latest uh, uh, all the parts where which is supported for the modules. The screenshot of the Terraform registry it gives a nice search uh, search bar where you can search. If I want a GCP network, I can just search GCP network. If I want for a Volt, I can search for a Volt or AWS networks. So so and so on. Now, once in an organization, a team or a set of team builds a lot of modules based on the requirement or they get from uh, the open source uh, version, it becomes really easy to build uh, the infrastructure in a Lego fashion. Uh, I'll just show you like uh, how it looks like. So for example, I have a module for GCP project uh, for creating some IAM roles, big query tables or data sets, the data store and other resources like bucket, GKE, uh, compute, network, and so on. Now, in an organization, I want to create a GCP project or multiple GCP project on a Google Cloud platform. So what I need is to create a GCP project, I can just call a GCP module, which creates, a, which gives me a project, a GCP project module, pass the parameters like what name I want, uh, what's the billing address, uh, so on. I'll get the one GCP project. Similarly, I can create multiple GCP projects as well. The same way, if I want a network or a set of network, I can just call the network module and I get the networks. If I want BigQuery tables, I call the BigQuery modules and get it. Similarly, compute, I call the compute modules and get a number of compute instances. These are the primitive bits. Now, if I have an app which compromises of more than one type of uh, resource or a service, like for an app, I need a compute, I need some bucket or I am. Basically, my app can call a compute module to create a VM instance, then also call the bucket modules to call the storage bucket and call the I am to create service account, as we saw in our the diagram. So this, in this way, the Terraform modules gives us uh, helps to build the infrastructure really uh, quickly and in a nice way. Now, this is good when we are developing, but as we develop a Terraform module, which is going to be shared by a team or an outside people, it makes sense to do some level of a testing. Like, that, does that behave as uh, we want and checks all the properties. So to do the testing, there are some frameworks available. Uh, so like a test kitchen, uh, then it has a plugin called Kitchen Terraform, uh, which helps uh, to bind the kitchen and the Terraform, and then the inspect GCP resources, which is written in the Ruby based on the R spec, uh, which can interact with the cloud APIs uh, to assert that the, the infrastructure is uh, as what it's described in the rules. So how the structure looks like when you have tests. So for a testing, we'll have another set of, uh, when I have another folder called test in which we'll have like a fixtures and integration. Fixtures is a Terraform uh, a code which calls the module and the integration is different set of tests. 
So here I have one default integration and written one default RP, which just say, checks that the bucket uh, exists and it has a, its a versioning is enabled or not. Apart from that, you need a kitchen.yml, which describes how kitchen, uh, where the tests are, uh, what provider uh, the kitchen has to use and so on. And in the gem file, just declare like what gems uh, we need and what versions. I'm going to quickly show on the GitHub like content of these files. But before that, I'll just go on the lifecycle. What's the kitchen lifecycle? So the kitchen lifecycle is pretty much similar to what the Terraform lifecycle is. We first create, uh, do a kitchen create, which creates a kitchen environment for that Terraform project. It basically creates a workspace. Once it's uh, initialized and created the workspace, we can do kitchen converge. When we do kitchen converge, it is going to create the resources using Terraform apply on the cloud. At this stage, we have the infrastructure created using that module. Now I want to verify that the module has behaved as expected. So I will run kitchen verify. So it is going to run the inspect test, which I have written in the default RB or in the different controls uh, and tells me like the controls are successful or unsuccessful or what type of test has passed or failed. And then I can do a kitchen destroy. So it is going to destroy the whole testing environment which it has created. So we don't get charged for the resources later on. So the source code lives on this repository. So I'll quickly navigate there. So which I have opened here. First of all, for a module, uh, I try to put some minimum information on the readme. So it becomes really uh, easy for anyone uh, who is from another team or from open source world to quickly see how what this module is about, how to use it. So I try to put the input variables uh, like an, in a table structure, the input variable name, its description, what what's the its what is type, it has a default value or not, and then I use it so that you can just quickly copy and get started with the module. And if are there any outputs, manage a change log, and so on. So just quickly go to the bucket.tf. So I'm creating a simple bucket uh, with a, a set of uh, properties. And in the examples, I have two examples like creating a storage bucket with a versioning or uh, without a versioning. So for example, if I take this example here, I'm just calling the module with the source, uh, the, what the bucket name I want, the project IDs and the labels. Now for the test, uh, before we go dive into the test, I'll just show the kitchen YAML. So here it just says, okay, the driver is Terraform, the provisioner is Terraform, uh, where the the structure, where the fixtures are, uh, which systems I want, what controls I want to run, etc. Now, if we dive into the test, I have a fixtures and integrations. So fixture is similar to the example which we have seen. So I'll just dive into the integration. Here it's a inspect YAML. It says, where's the inspect GCP uh, resource coming from? Uh, what attributes I want to pass? So this, for this example, it's only expect the bucket name. So I'm just saying uh, the bucket name is required. And then if I look at the control, then here I just say, I've given the title like, okay, I want to verify the GCS bucket under this control. The bucket name I'm getting from the attribute or I have set the default value as well. If there is no uh, nothing pass, I can just switch to this default value. And I'm just doing like describe the Google storage bucket, passing the bucket name, I'm checking it should exist, which means the inspect GCP will check the bucket is there in the GCP infrastructure, yes or no. If the bucket is created successfully, it is going to give me yes, true. And then the second one is it's versioning dot enable is equal to false. In my example, I created the bucket without a versioning. So this test should uh, pass. If I have created a bucket with versioning, then this test will fail. It's it will say, okay, the bucket should be uh, bucket should not have versioning enabled, but yes, the bucket has the versioning enabled. So the test this test fails. So at the end, you can get to know like what type what test has passed and what test has failed. And we can build a lot of other tests uh, uh, based on the requirements. So I'll. Uh, I think I have some time, so I'll quickly try to get the demo where I will just run the kitchen Terraform. So here I have 
uh, clone that repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first run the kitchen create, which is going to create our environment for the testing, like initialization and other bits. It's downloading all the providers required, initializing the backend, etc. Once I'm happy, I can just do converge, which will going to create the infrastructure. <laughs> it's going to validate, okay, the configuration is valid using Terraform validate. It has created the resource. And now I can do Verify, which is going to run the test. Something, it's takes some uh, bit of time on my local system, but yeah, it's going to uh, yeah, get the inspect GCP download and then going to run the inspect test uh, on the infrastructure. Let's hope it works. Yeah, so it says that the bucket my storage is expected to exist and it exists, it's green color, and this has versioning enabled equal to false because my bucket is uh, uh, doesn't have any versioning. Let's quickly try to fail this test. So I'll just try to update the test here and I will just say that versioning enabled should equal to be true. Just to give a test case where the test also fails, I'm just going, sorry. Uh, I'm going to run the kitchen verify. Just ignore, please ignore this. This my shell is a little bit broken. So yeah, the command is bundle exec kitchen verify. It's again going to uh, check the resources on the GCP infrastructure. And now we should see that this bucket dot this uh, this test should be uh, this should pass, and the next the second test should fail because the versioning is disabled on my bucket. So yes, it says this this has passed, this has failed, and in total the zero successful control because in one control I had two tests, one was failed, so the one control failed, and the summary test summary is one successful test and one failure. So that's all for the demo and the source code is available on the GitHub. Uh, now, uh, we have some time for the question, so feel free to ask any question now, or you can uh, ask any question on my LinkedIn, Twitter, or Stack Overflow. Let me check if there are any questions on. Hey, that was awesome. Uh, I'm really, really, I really kind of want to try these things out. I, if I wasn't emceeing, I'd be straight on uh, opening up my computer right now. Thank <laughs> you so much for that. I got a question, I suppose, around yep. how do you how do you find the integration with all of the kind of the testing tools works with with CI? I'm guessing it, it's it's just flawless, right? It's just normal normal kind of CI flow. Yeah, it's a normal kind of uh, CI. So we can just use Jenkins or any other, and we can just use like uh, write those scripts to run kitchen and yeah, it works uh, really fine. Oh, that's really neat. So you can, I guess, kind of follow that standard sort of Git flow approach where folks can check in their changes to like, you know, like a branch, obviously you do the builds and the tests on the branch, but you get yeah. that safety before you merge it in a master. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And it's a good way to uh, build the modules because you're, once you uh, create a module, you are going to expose to other people as well. So if you're making a new feature, we, not, we want to make sure that it doesn't break uh, yeah, the yeah. stuff. And like the inspect can also be used as a compliance that I couldn't cover because it's 30 minute talk. So that's probably another topic of the talk, how I can leverage this inspect to do the compliance in a very secure environment. So we can expect well. you back. At Hashi Talks next year, then. Because sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that everybody wants to see that talk. Sure. I, I think that was yeah. great. I am genuinely thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for uh, everyone for uh, listening to me. Yeah, uh, I'm here for some time. So if there are any question on YouTube or Zoom, so I can stick around here for some time and then answer the questions, or yeah, 
uh, uh, you guys can contact me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm happy to reply there as well. That's awesome. Hey, maybe also um, share uh, share out your your links there in the chat so folks can copy pasta straight into their um, their browsers and and also man, you know if you if you have the time throw it over on YouTube as well. Sure, sure. I'll just uh, put on the YouTube and the uh, uh, yeah on the QA of the Zoom. Sure.